Procyon is the brightest star in the constellation of Canis Minor, and the system lies at a distance of just 11.46 light years. It's therefore one of Earth's nearest stellar neighbours. A binary star system, Procyon consists of an F-class main sequence star in orbit with a faint white dwarf companion. The pair orbit each other with a period of 40.84 years. Procyon is usually the eighth brightest star in the night sky, culminating at midnight on the 14th of January. Its hue has been described as having a faint yellow tinge to it. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we return to the Alpha Canis Minoris system for a more in-depth look at one of the most beautiful stars in our sky, Procyon. So let's get to it. We've talked about Procyon before on this channel. The nearest F-class star to the Sun, you might have thought Procyon was slightly bigger and brighter than our Sun, and you wouldn't be wrong. Procyon is around 1.5 times the solar mass and twice the solar radius, and has 7 times the Sun's luminosity. The difference however is that Procyon A is at a late stage in its time on the main sequence. Very bright for its spectral class, this suggests that it is evolving into a subgiant that has nearly fused all its hydrogen core into helium, after which it will expand as the nuclear reactions move outside the core. As it continues to expand over the next 10 to 100 million years, the star will eventually swell to around 80 to 150 times its current diameter and become a red or orange colour. The name Procyon comes from the ancient Greek meaning before the dog, since it precedes the dog star of Sirius as it travels through the sky due to Earth's rotation. I always tend to think of Procyon as being outshone by Sirius, but it does rise first in the Northern Hemisphere which is something I suppose. Shining with an apparent magnitude of 0.34, the star is very easy to find and forms one of the three corners of the Winter Triangle alongside Sirius and Betelgeuse. It carries the designation of Alpha Canis Minoris obviously being the brightest star in the constellation as viewed from Earth, although Gomesa, Betis Canis Minoris, is actually a more powerful star. Procyon A as you may know has a faint companion, Procyon B. It's not visible to the naked eye though with an apparent magnitude of over 10. The pair orbit each other with a period of 40.84 years, along a very elliptical orbit with an eccentricity of 0.4, which is indeed even more eccentric than Mercury's in our own system. The average separation between these two components is 15 astronomical units, which works out to a little less than the distance between Uranus and the Sun, though the eccentric orbit means that it carries them as close as 8.9 astronomical units, and as far as 21. It does seem to make it interesting. Looking from the principal star, Procyon B at perihelion, or closest approach, would shine at just minus 13.1, which is roughly twice the brightness of the full moon, and at aphelion, or most distance, it would dip to almost minus 12, which is only half the brightness of the full moon, perhaps a little more. As it's such a dim star, Procyon B was not visually confirmed until 1896, when John Martin Schaebeler observed it at the predicted position. Procyon B is much more difficult to observe from Earth than its white dwarf counterpart Sirius B, due to a greater apparent magnitude difference and indeed smaller angular separation from the primary stars. Not only this, but at 0.6 solar masses, Procyon B is considerably less massive than Sirius B. However, the peculiarities of degenerate matter ensure that strangely, it's actually larger in volume than its more famous neighbour, with an estimated radius of 8,600 kilometres versus around 5,800 for Sirius B. It has a white dwarf stellar classification of DQZ, having a helium dominated atmosphere with traces of heavy elements. There is a mystery related to Procyon B though, in that its mass is unusually low for a white dwarf star of its type. Its surface temperature of 7740 Kelvin is also much cooler than Sirius B, and this is testament to its lesser mass, and perhaps crucially, greater age. The mass of the progenitor or original star for Procyon B would have been around 2.6 solar masses, so it would have been larger than Procyon A at the time. I find this fascinating, as once upon a time the A star would have been the dimmer of the two, and it would have been a very impressive system, and it's likely any possibilities of life or probably planets in the system are slim to none. It is strange to see these odd pairings of star. Procyon A at the later end of its life, in an orbital dance with the dead remnants of its former stellar companion. Perhaps we should be thankful they're not people, because obviously staring at your dead partner as you yourself age couldn't really be all that much fun. It's thought that Procyon B came to the end of its life some 1.2 billion years ago, after a main sequence lifetime of around 700 million years. Looking back now from Procyon B, 
Procyon A would shine at perihelion to approximately the same level as the Sun at Jupiter in our own system, minus 24.2 apparent magnitudes, although it would of course actually be twice as far away. At aphelion, or most distant, it would dim to minus 22.32, which is roughly the same amount of light as at Saturn, but again at twice the distance. It would be an impressive sight no doubt, and Procyon is actually the official name for the star Alpha Canis Minoris A. If we turn away from the system back to our own Sun, our Sun would appear at a magnitude plus 2.55 star in the constellation of Acula. Canis Minor would of course be missing its brightest star, to be replaced by Gomesa. Procyon is an F-class star that lies in our local area. It shares its time with a small white dwarf that once upon a time was much more mighty star than its partner. It's one of the easiest stars to find in our skies, and it shares the famous winter triangle asterism with Sirius and Betelgeuse. The star is ageing, and over the next 10 to 100 million years, it will swell in size to an orbit that would possibly engulf Mars in our own system. It will finally dominate all the stars in its locality, although by then, it will have long since dissipated from our system. Finally, the dance will be complete, and the Procyon system will spend the rest of eternity as two tiny dwarf stars, slowly cooling and dancing together. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and our link is in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so. If you'd like any videos or subjects that seem brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below. Perhaps it could be your idea next week that shows up. Take good care of yourselves and look after your friends and family as well. And I'll see you on the next one.